Welcome to Facebook Live. I'm John McLean here with Greg Rajan, the senior editor of Texas Sports Nation. We're at the Chronicle. And starting next week, I'm told that we're going to do this Facebook Live on the Houston Chronicle's main Facebook page, not just the sports page, which means we will be exposed to a whole bigger audience. I was just telling Greg I wish somebody would sponsor this show. So if any of you, Greg Tyndall, I know you've got a lot of money laying around. You want to sponsor our show on HoustonChronicle.com, you got my digits. Now, I spent seven days in Indianapolis at the Combine doing interviews, talking to NFL people. Always a great time in the offseason. Aaron Wilson and I, we've written so many things, I couldn't begin to name what all we've done. We also have a series we started yesterday about uh, previewing free agency. Aaron had the offensive lineman. I have one today that uh, Greg Rogers posted that is on the defensive backs, so and we'll do this till we cover all the positions. And we have some breaking defensive backs news. And Kevin yeah. Johnson, which I reported last week, he would be released uh, three times this week. Kevin's out, it, that saves him 9.125 million. Now he's got time to try to find another job. If he doesn't, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't re-sign him to like the minimum, if he doesn't get a better deal somewhere else. Right now, they had two corners on the team that would be Kev, uh, Jonathan Joseph, who's going to be 35, and Aaron Colvin, who was a disappointment in his first season as a slot corner. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I think Kevin will get a job. He's young, certainly hadn't been used up because he'd been hurt so much, but I think they'll sign at least one veteran corner in free agency. I think they will use a high pick, two, maybe a one, maybe a three and a two, but they've got to have corners. They want to get bigger and they want to get faster. And this is a good draft for that. This is a good draft for offensive tackles and cornerbacks, which are the two major needs. Now, if they lost Tyron Matthew and Kareem Jackson, they'd have to go get another safety. But I think they're going to re-sign Tyron Matthew. I believe Kareem Jackson will go somewhere else, coming off his best season at 31. But he would give them four safeties. You don't need four. You need three. Greg, we got anybody? Oh, we got questions rolling in, General. Um... First, Charlie, Charlie Melcher says, so they let go of Kevin Johnson. How would you sum up his tenure with the Texans? Just start injury, off from injury play. He played, early in his, played really well early in his career. He had injury issues every year. He did not fulfill the promise he showed early in his career. Two years ago when Kevin came back, he was totally discombobulated. He made a lot of mistakes. He was fighting, arguing with officials. And then last year, first game, concussion. He was ready to come back three quarters of the way through the season, but he'd already had two concussions. They didn't want to risk a third one. He's a great guy. He works his tail off. Worked out there through the off season. I'm hoping he can get a deal from somebody else and the new start might do him good. Baltimore would be ideal, considering that's where he's from. But uh, his sister was former Ravens cheerleader, but uh, Kevin's a really good guy. I hope he lands on his feet. But as a number one pick overall, it was a disappointment. All right, John. Next question from Byron Godfrey. This topic is kind of a it's kind of his Moby Dick, his white whale. General is uh, Nick Foles going to Jacksonville. How is their cap space for that? Uh, they don't have cap space right now, Sarge. They're going to have to do some some uh, cost cutting. They're going to have to cut guys, redo some contracts. On the other hand, there doesn't seem to be a big market for Nick Foles. He's been really good in the playoffs. I think he's like six and two, three, four, something like that. But he has not had but one good season from start to finish. That was Chip Kelly's first year when he had, I think, 27 touchdowns, two interceptions, and the highest rating. That's the year Peyton Manning set all the records and was MVP. But uh, when they hired John D. Filippo as quarterback coach in Philadelphia as offensive coordinator, even though Doug Marone said, oh, no, the thought never crossed our mind, most people have thought Foles is ticketed for Jacksonville. That made the division even better. They're going to cut Bortles. I'd love to see the Texans get their hands on Case Keenum or Blake Bortles or Tyrod Taylor, but the quarterback who comes here, if indeed they don't re-sign Brandon Wheaton, has got to come here with the understanding you will not play unless Deshaun Watson gets hurt. So you have to come in with a mentality of you may never play again. Brandon Whedon can do that. Usually you want a guy in his 30s. Case Keenum wants to continue playing. Now he's going to be cut by the Broncos, and he'll want to go where he has a shot. And then I would imagine Blake Bortles, 
would like to compete. But Bortles, he's a big guy, but he can move. He's a great guy. I wouldn't mind seeing him here at all. But the one I'd really like to see is Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod, okay. Next question, and I like this question from Kelly Harrington. Scroll back up to it, General. Which late round prospects combine performance surprised you? Uh, let's see, what was that guy's name? Safety, Zedrick Woods from Ole Miss, who was a free agent or a low pick, and all of a sudden he was the fastest guy at the combine, a safety. Now, he's not a big guy, he's 5'11, 205, but he ran a 429 officially. And when a guy runs like that and he's a defensive back, teams are going to take notice. They're going to go back to all the game tape and they're going to say, okay, did this guy use his speed in a manner that helped him make plays? And I'm guessing he did not. Remember, when we get all caught up in speed at the combine, and I'm as bad as anybody else, I love to watch guys run. And a guy that really did well was Isaiah Johnson. At U of A, 6'2", 209, ran a 440, only four corners ran faster. So I do like that. But when a guy is not supposed to get drafted, runs like that, and nobody had projected it, what it means is it sends people back to the videotape to see what he did as a player. Ron Combo Jr. says, who do I call to sponsor the show? Uh, send us a DM, Ron. We'll, uh, we'll get back you to you. You can DM one of us, Ron. We'd love to see you do that. And I'm, I'm being serious. I'd love to have a sponsor on, on this because we're going to a much bigger audience, going to HoustonChronicle.com, which has how many followers? Uh, too, many, too many for us to count. That's I think good. it's over, way over a million. And uh, so that was an easy question. All right, from Solomon Williams. What do you think of Houston taking Hakeem Butler with a third-round pick? Well, Akeem Butler's not going to be there in the third round. Akeem Butler is six, almost 6'6". Six, six. He ran great 40 times. Uh, also, I no, no, he's an Iowa State receiver from Fort Bend. Yeah, Travis. and uh, who was from Baltimore. And I did a story on him that's still on uh, Texas Sports Nation in which his mother died after a long battle with cancer in Baltimore. And he moved down here where he had family. He says best thing he ever did. Number one, they didn't have spring football in Baltimore. I'm guessing they didn't have 707. And he's a tremendous athlete. I remember watching him when Iowa State played Baylor, and they were always worried about him. So I think he's going in the second round. There's a lot. The Texans need a fourth receiver. They need a third running back. I was asked on Sports Radio 610 today by John Lopez and Landry Locker if they might use that first-round pick on an inside pass rusher, as some website had predicted. And I said, uh, no. That's like I saw a mock draft by a guy I really respect, has him taking a wide receiver in the first round. I'm thinking, what planet are you on? They're not going to take a wide receiver in the first round. And I think their two biggest needs, we all know, we all know is tackle and cornerback. And, and uh, Landry Locker asked me if they might take Josh Jacobs of Alabama, the uh, best running back. And I said, no, they're not taking a running back in the first round. They got too many other needs. Now, maybe if they fill their needs in free agency, which they won't because it's a terrible free agent free agency period for offensive tackles, better for corners and really good for safeties, but they don't need a safety if they re-sign Tyron Matthew. But um, that's, uh, I can't remember what the original question was. Uh, what she thought about Keem Butler with the Oh, Keem pick. Butler. And so they're going to draft a receiver at some point, or they're going to sign a veteran. And the veteran is going to have to have a contract that is heavily laden with incentives because it's hard to tell an agent tell a vet, well, you're going as a fourth receiver. But wait, what do you mean fourth receiver? I'm not a fourth receiver. Yeah, but you've got these other two hurt all the time, so it's a good chance you're going to play. So I think they'd have to draft somebody low or draft or sign a guy that's 30 years old. All right, from Byron Easley, another friend of the show. Hey, John, what's your favorite combine event, and what are your thoughts on UH's Isaiah Johnson as a converted receiver with his hands and speed as a Texans possibility? Was it Byron Godfrey I just called Sarge? Yeah. Because Byron Easley's a Sarge. Byron Easley's a Sarge. Byron Godfrey's been on here so much, we're going to have to start calling him lieutenant, or captain. <laughs> okay, Sarge, my favorite's like everybody else. I want to watch. I want to watch the 40. I love the vertical. Going back to when David Thompson won a national championship with NC State over UCLA, he was 6'4", he jumped out of the gym. It was the first time I'd ever heard a vertical used, 
and his was in mid 40s. I've always been fascinated at how high guys can jump. The combine that I hate the most are quarterbacks throwing to receivers. When I did my risers, fallers, and surprisers that's on Texas Sports Nation, I didn't even include the quarterbacks. I just don't pay attention to the quarterbacks other than if a guy's an inch taller than we all thought he would be, and that's it. But uh, I like watching that. And any of the drills like 60-yard shuttle, 10-yard split, 20-yard split, three-cone drill, uh, those are balance, at being agile. I like the DBs running their back pedal. I like a lot of those in which they're purely based on times. But nothing beats the 40. And a guy like Montez Sweat, 6'6", 260, Mississippi State. He was great in the senior ball, runs a 4-4-1. His agent, Brian Overstreet's from Houston. And unlike some players who lose weight to get faster, he gained 20 pounds because he played at 6'6", 240. I said, Brian, think about how fast he'd been if he hadn't made him gain all that weight. <laughs> Good point. Uh, let's see, next question here from Cedric Wilson. Hey there, guys, what free agent corners look good? Funny you mention that since we posted a free agency uh, defensive backs preview today you should check out at Texas Sports Nation, but go ahead, General. Unfortunately for the Texans, uh, a lot of the best DBs are safeties. There are some really good safeties. Adrian Amos of the Bears is one strong safety, a free safety. LaMarcus Joyner from the Rams. Now, Earl Thomas, he would be the best. He's going to be 30 in May, coming off a fractured leg. Earl may have to do like Tyron Matthew last year, take a one-year prove-it deal. That's not what he wants. And by the way, I don't think he's going to the Cowboys. Uh, I've been told the Cowboys are not interested because he wants too much money. And uh, I don't think Earl will get it coming off a fractured leg. Uh, Landon Collins, the, 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 it's been reported for a week. He's not going to be franchised by the Giants. He's 25 years old. But the only way the Texans would be after safety is if Matthew and Kareem Jackson both left. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to re-sign Kareem. Now, corners, uh, Ronald Darby coming off the torn ACL, 25 years old. In 2017, he had a fractured ankle, came back at the end of the year, played well for the Super Bowl team with the Eagles. Steven Nelson started every game with the Chiefs. I'm leery about guys Andy Reid doesn't bring back after Jeff Allen and Zach Fulton, although Fulton was better than Jeff Allen. Uh, Bryce Callahan, he's a slot corner. They don't need a slot corner because they haven't given up on Aaron Colvin. And the guy that was really good, but man, he's been hurt a lot. Chargers corner, Jason Barrett. Jason Barrett was so good coming out of TCU, but then he just started getting injured, and he's undersized. LaMarcus Joyner, safety, is really undersized. But Pierre Desir from Indy, 28 years old, coming off a really good season, made a lot of tackles. He's one that I'm not sure how he runs. Texans got to have corners that can cover the T.Y. Hiltons of the world. And uh, so... Those are a few. Check out online. I've got the top five, and then I have a best of the rest, and then the Texans needs. We have this series running on Texas Sports Nation every day. Thank you. We have a new mock draft coming out tomorrow, post-combine. All right, John, that's some good product placement there. Uh, let's get another question from TJ Days. After the combine, who do you think the Texans will draft in the first round? I like Andre Dillard, but he will be long gone. Agree with that? Also, let me go back to the Sarge's question about Isaiah Johnson from U of H. 6'2", 209, great size. I'm amazed that the corners are finally getting bigger. The receivers have been bigger. Now, Byron Murphy and DeAndre Baker, the two top corners besides Grady Williams, are not quite six foot. Grady Williams is 6'2". And none of those guys, I don't think, will go in the top half of the first round. They're not surefire prospects. But Isaiah Johnson and some of the Jamel Dean of Auburn ran a 4-3-0. He's 6-1. Some of those guys with size who can run, those are the ones you have to really look at hard. You have to look at a guy, the biggest corner, Joe John Williams from Vandy, who's 6'4 and 211. I haven't seen many 6'4 corners, but he ran. 4'5", 6", 4'5", I believe, and that's good for a tall guy like that. But can he keep up with T.Y. Hilton? I don't know. But it is a good draft for corners, not at the top half of the first round. If the Texans were picking, say, 10 or 11, there wouldn't be good value. 23 down through the third round, there's good value. All right, John, from our friend... Uh, Scary Manozich. Sorry, from Kenny Williams. 
Is Jadavia Clowney the right player to franchise? Of course he is. He's disruptive. He's a great run player. He's good pass rusher, not a great pass rusher. Defensive, offensive coordinators have to game plan for two players, J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney, so why would you not franchise him? You just can't let him walk away. Okay, next question from our friend J.J. Spears. Howdy, John and Greg. Hello, J.J. If the Texans miss out on re-signing Kareem Jackson or Tyron Matthew, can you see them bringing in Bears free agent safety Adrian Amos? I would. Since he and Bill O'Brien have connections from their Penn State days. I would see that. Uh, now, I believe the Bears are making every effort to re-sign Amos and re-sign Callahan their slot corner. They do not want to lose two valuable members of their secondary. So if they can bring them back, they don't need to go out and spend money in free agency. Is the defensive coordinator of the Bears, Vic Fangio, is the new head coach of the Broncos. Broncos happen to need a safety. This is the best thing that could happen to Adrian Amos because you get two teams bidding for you and the price goes up. I do not believe the Texans are going to lose Matthew and Jackson. They've got money to spend. They've been in negotiations with, with uh, Tyron Matthew, and uh, they don't want him to hit the market. I thought Kareem Jackson was gone when his contract was up, and then they got him right before he went on the market. So I think they'll get that deal done. All right, John, i got a change-up for you from our friend Blake Drew with an Astros question. Good. I'm headed to spring training this weekend. All right. Do you see Dallas Keuchel agreeing on a contract with the Astros? At this point, he should come back, even if it's just for one season. I'd love to see Keiko come back for one season, getting 15, 16, 17, 18 million. I don't care. Charlie Martin got a two year deal for 15 million with Tampa. Keiko would help the rotation. Everybody knows him well. He's a left hander, he's just turning 31. Obviously, Scott Boris has priced him out of the market so far. Boris believes in waiting. Whether somebody gets hurt, Boris got that three hundred thirty million from Philadelphia, but it was all it was it was a thirteen year deal for twenty five million a year, whatever it is. So there's others making more annual salary, but it's guaranteed. So uh, Boris drives a hard bargain. He's got a good relationship with the Astros. I think I can't see any Astros fan who wouldn't like to have Keiko back. Now I will not know if I'd give him a multi year deal. Because they got Forrest Whitley on the verge. They got Corbin Martin on the bird. Jay Barasukas, or however you pronounce his name, he's another top. J.K. Bukowskis. Bukowskis. Yeah. They got him as another one who's uh, they've got high hopes for. So to me, the maximum you would do with Keiko would be two. All right, from Oscar Cruz. Now that the Texans let Kevin Johnson go, what do you think they're going to get in the first round? Are you still looking at offensive tackle there? I still look. Oh, the last question about. Tackle. I would love to see him get Andre Dillard. He's the best pure left tackle. The Texans need there to be a run on these uh, defensive linemen and edge rushers and outside linebackers. They need Devin Bush now to jump up ahead of him, not just Devin White. They need quarterbacks moving ahead of them. They need Josh Jacobs going ahead of them. DK Moore, some of those big fast receivers, so they'll have more choices. But the problem is, if, as Brian Gaines said, they think Chantrell Henderson will be their right tackle. It doesn't mean they will, but that's what they think now. But Dillard is a pure left tackle. Greg Little from Ole Miss, pure left tackle, but he was slow, didn't have a real good combine. He may be out of the first round. And the others are guys that might be more suited to right tackle, might be more suited inside, like Cody Ford, Oklahoma, the guy's a mauler. He's a beast. He is a mean SOB. I'd love to add him to that offense, but you don't know if he can play left tackle. So Dillard is, is the guy that I would like to see him get. I don't believe Brian Gain will trade up. I could see him trading down, but that is the single most important position they've got to fill because I don't think they're going to get it filled in free agency. All right, John. Um, next question here. Let me find it here. Give me one second. Uh, From Pete Delgadillo, oh, Petten Delgadillo, I'm sorry. Is Johnson, ba is Johnson Batamosi the next cut candidate? He was signed for one reason, special teams. Now, their special teams improved dramatically last year in almost every category. And uh, they were not a problem. They had a positive impact on field position. Brad Seeley and his two assistants did a tremendous job, and they wanted Batamosi because he is a great special teams player.
but he is not a defensive back. So I don't see them cutting him because uh, there's so much turnover on special teams every year. If you do have some continuity, that's good. Brian Peters, who's been a really good special teams player for years, his contract's up. Don't know what he could get somewhere else, but I'm hoping they re-sign him. You look at guys like Matthew Slater with the Patriots. He's a receiver by name, but, I mean, he's a special teamer. That's why they keep That's him around. That's why he's there. He's yeah. special teams captain, and he's been great for the Patriots organization. And they, that's kind of like Brian Peters here. I hope they bring him back because he, when you understand your lot in life is to be as good on special teams as possible, and Johnson Batamosi feels that way too, that's good for the team. All right, from Carson Haley, what's the likelihood of a Jadavion Clowney trade? I don't see him trading Clowney. Uh, number one, why would they? If they traded him, they'd have to have somebody in the front seven who could replace him. Clowney is a disruptive player. He plays multiple positions. He moves around. Sometimes you see him, he's there shooting the two gaps in the middle, and sometimes he's outside, up, down. Uh, he's just now figured it out. They don't want to get rid of Cloudy. They want to keep him. If they have to franchise him a second year, like the Cowboys have done to Marcus Lawrence, and then they'll do that too. But you don't want to get rid of Cloudy. All right, from Trevor Volker, any word on any free agents that Texans have brought in or are looking at? They cannot negotiate with players until in, Monday. Uh, not unless they've been cut. If you've yeah. been cut by another team, then you can do anything you want. But you cannot start talking legally till Monday, and you can't sign them till, when, till Tuesday. No, it's two days before, right? To Wednesday. Wednesday the 13th. Yeah. It's Wednesday the 13th, yeah. So you, mu you can negotiate Monday. Like when they – uh, let's see. They never talked to Brock Osweiler's agent until two days before. And then it was amazing how quick they got that deal done. And so uh, at the combine, you see a lot of agents and contract negotiators need these little nook and crannies, or you'll know they're up in their room negotiating. And say Greg it represents, I'd say I'm the Texans, and Greg rep represents. Uh, two Texans, and yet he represents uh, impending free agents for other teams. When it's just he and I, do you think we're really not going to talk about those guys? Of course we are. Is it illegal? It's my word against Greg. Greg goes public, and he says he talked to me illegally, then nobody's going to talk to him anymore. So he's not going to do that. It happens all the time. It's all about what you can prove. All right, from Kayla Cardinal, uh, one of our regulars. Thank you, Kayla. Uh, Will Fuller was on his way to a 1,000-yard season, looks like a Pro Bowl caliber receiver when healthy. John, what are your thoughts on Will Fuller? Will Fuller has played 11 games with Deshaun Watson. He has 11 touchdown passes. He is a big-time deep threat. He hasn't dropped pass since the first year when he played with Osweiler. He's, he catches the ball anywhere. I think it would be so much fun to see what could happen if Fuller could play 16 or 14. And because he and Watson have a rapport, and he's such a good deep threat, that means two guys have to be worried about his speed. I think he'll come back from the torn ACL, same thing Watson had. Watson was back ready for camp. He will be too. Uh, you just, as a Texans fan, you keep your fingers crossed he can stay healthy. Cause, and I think QT, what we saw from him in the slot, QT was the answer to their slot problems but he had those hamstring issues at the beginning of training camp and never, you know, got over him totally. And he was so good when he played. I just, I think if you're a Texans fan, your mouth should be watering about the possibility of Watson, Hopkins, QT in the middle, and Fuller outside. All right, from Mike and Angel Castellanos, should the Texans take advantage of Deshaun Watson's rookie deal and go all in on Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell? Uh, no. They're not going to pay Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell wants to be the highest paid running back in history, which means he would surpass uh, Todd Gurley. I don't think they're going to do – I know they're not going to do that. Antonio Brown, I have never seen a guy work harder at killing his trade value. And I've seen some great stuff written by people who have covered the Steelers and know him and think he's doing this to where they'll just have to cut him. But I don't see them just cutting him. I could see him making him play, and then he'd have to sit out and miss all kind of money. But he, I just, Drew Rosenhaus is his agent. Rosenhaus is one of the best. 
When T.O. had his antics, Rosenhaus was speaking up publicly and he was taken up for it. He hadn't said a word about Antonio Brown because he knows he's diminishing his trade value and the Texans are not bringing him in here. All right, John, one question here from Mark Garcia Rhodes. Is there any chance the Texans re-sign both Kareem Jackson and Tyran Matthew for more depth? I think that it would be doubtful because I think both of them are going to get good money. Not great money, not obscene money, but good money. Kareem's 31, but he's coming off a really good season. He's a safety at this point, but he can fill in at corner. He can play inside, he can play outside. He's physical. It's amazing at 185, he's as physical as he is. And he got a lot of recognition last year. Didn't get in the Pro Bowl. And some of the recognition he got was because he got screwed not getting to go to the Pro Bowl. So I think somebody will give him a two- or three-year deal. And now, if they, if, say, Kareem said, I just got to stay in Houston, I'm entrenched there, I don't think he'll do that. This is his last contract. He's got to go for the gold. And uh, I think somebody will pay him more than the Texans will. If they signed him, they'd give him four safeties. You don't need four safeties you can keep Andre Howe down, but you couldn't keep Reed, Matthew, and Jackson all down when they all want to play and they're all the same positions. All right, John, from Ron E. Vera, do you expect any noticeable changes in the Texans' direction after the passing of Bob McNair? I don't. Cal McNair's basically, while his dad was battling cancer last year, I believe the last big thing Bob did uh, was hire Brian Gain, extend Bill O'Brien, and then I know before they, Bob liked to know what was going on. And before they gave Matthew the one-year $7 million deal in early March, Bob signed off on it. But Cal really was running the team because his dad was in bad shape and was undergoing treatment. And Cal's been his right-hand man. I don't, I know this, the philosophy is not going to change. You're not going to see them all of a sudden go out and sign guys who beat up women. You're not going to see him go out and sign guys with a pattern of bad behavior. That was Bob McNair's motto. They take guys that got busted smoking pot. They take guys that got tasered by the police. They take guys that broke up, broke up a barroom fight. Bob didn't want guys who hit women. He didn't, and he said a pattern of bad behavior because when you win, everything's great. But when you lose, those guys become cancers, and they're the first people to raise hell in the dressing room. And last year, when they started 0-3, there's a lot of guys on other teams that probably would have been using Facebook and Instagram and Twitter to complain publicly. The Texans don't have guys like that. All right, John, we got time for a couple more questions. From Brian Giles, hey, John, after Greg Little's disappointing combine performance, do you think he will fall to late in the second round? Boy, I, I don't think so. The guy's 6'5", 315. He's a, he's a, he's a multi-year starter, left tackle. Maybe everybody thinks, well, my coach can do better than that coach because he is gifted. He ran a 5-3-3. That's not good. But Orlando Brown had the worst combine I've ever seen from an offensive lineman last year, and he started right tackle for the Ravens and played really well. So Little may still go in the first round, but I don't see – any way he's going to be available when the Texans pick 54th and 55th in the second round. From Gino Wise, could you see the Texans signing Bengals tight end Tyler Eifert? If he can stay healthy, he's worth the risk. He stays healthy like Samuel L. Jackson and Unbreakable. I mean, he's not. If a he stayed healthy, he would have multiple offers because he is so gifted. But do you take a chance on a guy who's older? who's had multiple injuries recently. If you do, it's a contract that is heavily laden with performance clauses. But I would love to see him have a chance. But they like Jordan Thomas and Jordan Akins. And they like Ryan Griffin. They're all under contract. They Think about, and I've talked about this a million times, most players make their biggest improvement from their first to their second year because they figured out what it takes to be a pro, and teams have figured out what they can and can't do. So Jordan Thomas and Jordan Akins, I think, could be a really good one-two punch. All right, last question, Carlos Aguilar. If we land and overpay for free agent tackle Trent Brown, do we still draft the left tackle in the first round? I think if they land an overpaid left tackle uh, Trent Brown, they would draft a tackle who could play either side. 
but I don't see them landing overpaid tackle Trent Brown. I think it'll, the left tackle will be a rookie first round pick. Right tackle will be Chantrell Henderson. Swing tackle will be Julio Davenport. That's what they keep active on game day. If you're going to go out and say use a second round pick on another tackle, then one of those guys is not going to be active on game days, and you don't want it to be a second round pick. But uh, I'd be really surprised unless Trent Brown's agent comes back down to earth if the Texans are going to be in a running for him. Nate Solder was a proven guy over multiple years. Trent Brown was given up on by the 49ers, and he was hurt a lot, and then he played well as a run against the run, but it was really hard to tell against pass rushers because Brady got rid of the ball so quick. Okay, we'll do this again next Tuesday. We'll be back. Thank you guys very much for coming on as always. Greg will have the information to you, and I will tweet it. Next Tuesday, we're going to come from the Houston Chronicles main Facebook account. Check out everything we got on Texas Sports Nation and HoustonChronicle.com on the draft, the combine, and free agency. Also, uh, one programming note, any questions we didn't get to will be candidates for your mailbag on Friday. I'll pick up the mailbag again, and I'll send to Greg late Thursday. He'll post it Friday morning. Some of you have already been sending me questions. Thank you very much, as always. We'll talk next week.